Hey guys, uh, Mo back um, with another repair. Uh, today we have a Sundown subwoofer. Uh, this is the Sundown XV Volume 3 or XV uh, Version 3 or XV3. Um, so uh, a friend of mine or acquaintance of mine uh, said, hey, can you take a look at this? Looks like just like tinsel leads need to be repaired. I was like, no problem. Um, dust cap looks fine. Surround looks fine visually. Um, pretty beefy, high roll surround. Uh, this is a 12 inch model here, dual, vo uh, dual voice coil as all most of the sundowns are. But um, if you take a look over here, uh, you see that there was quite a bit of rework done. Uh, let me try to get a better picture here. There's quite a bit of rework done and someone had tried to solder the um let's see if i can get even a better view there you go someone had tried to solder um the tinsel leads back together so uh, i i don't ever usually see this uh, in fact i've never seen this uh usually when it's gotten to this point uh that means the voice call is burnt out and you're just running so much uh current through the tinsel leads and you usually don't see it discolored in the center right you'd see it discolored at the very ends or it propagates from one end to the other. So this was really weird. Um, as you can see, double braided um, uh, stitched tinsel leads on this end. Originally he said, hey, it's just missing the, the solder terminals or the spring load terminals. And uh, uh, it looks like it's more than that. So it's definitely on this side here. You can see some burn marks. And I'm not sure if those burn marks are from the solder iron or something else. Um, as I rotate it here a little bit, you see that even here, um, I guess it looks fine, but I do see some burn marks in between both sets of, uh, tinsel leads. So that's one issue that, uh, this subwoofer has. Um, the second is on the other end. Here we go. Uh, you can see, and let me try to get a better view here. I apologize about that. Uh, you can see here, uh, reworked again, um, with a lot of, uh, I guess some amateur soldering is what I would say. Uh, certainly this is not something that I would... Uh, see anyone who knows how to solder do so uh, a lot of bubbles which tells me it's just cold solder joints it really wasn't making a good electrical connection um and it wasn't done properly uh, again missing another tinsel uh push spring terminal here and if we rotate it to this side uh, we'll probably see that it's very similar here so uh we've got tinsel leads and then as i looked a little bit look closer you can just kind of see that uh, on the back end, uh, looks like you've got some carbon residue. And uh, again, if you guys are aware, bottom plate, top plate acts as a part of the circuit for these uh, subwoofers. Um, and so it's very interesting to see you got some carbon deposits coming here in a pretty straight line. Uh, obviously you got rust because it is steel, uh, chrome plate is steel. So either this has been damaged in the past and uh, rebuilt or it's currently damaged. Um, I did go ahead and measure the voice coils. They measure about 1.3, 1.5 ohms each. Um, so it looks like the voice coils are fine, uh, at least not completely open yet. Doesn't mean they're not damaged or grinding or uh, uh, burnt up with too much current, but at least they're shorted because it's just a wire round around. That's what an inductor is, right? Um, visually, again, I didn't see anything here. I don't hear any grinding pushing down on it or pushing up. Uh, I don't see rips in the surround. Again, this could have easily been uh, rebuilt as Sundown does uh, have significant amount of rebuilt houses uh, that work on their um, uh, subwoofer. So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and just start with the tinsel leads, uh, see if I can make some of those uh, uh, repairs properly. What I had recommended, instead of just using uh, push spring terminals like this does, I personally, again, I know they're very convenient. I know they're very popular. I'm not a fan of these, especially with a high power subwoofer like this. Um, it's a resistance point, right? Why not do what, like folks like American Bass or DC Audio or Digital Design does, uh, where you have tinsel leads coming directly out with some uh, good thick gauge wire uh, to connect right to your termination, right? Gatley Audio. Uh, a lot of the folks that are just... It's not cutting corners. Um, it's just really giving you a best uh, electrical connection to the voice coil itself. So uh, he agreed to it. So we'll try to take a shot at it and see if that works. 
Um, just, you know, you really never know with these repairs as you start. Uh, you can go down a rabbit hole, but uh, overall beefy subwoofer. I'll take some measurements later uh, as far as weight and everything like that. But definitely looks like it's kind of, it's gone through some things um, over its time. Uh, uh, but yeah, hopefully we can bring it back to life and let's see what Mo can do. All right, so got on the bench, uh, and the first thing I wanted to do was just to kind of remove the solder balls uh, that were on there. Uh, let me see if I can get a good image here. As you can see, there was there was no reason um, to have all that solder on there. So I started removing it, came off relatively easy, like I suspected, uh, pretty amateur job. So uh, it was a cold solder joint. In fact, uh, here's the solder coming off. It didn't take much, uh, just a little bit of heat with my solder iron. Uh, and then uh, my uh, pliers here with a little bit of suction, uh, it just came apart in big old chunks, right? Um, so not a good uh, repair job or whatever repair it was done. And it looks like the burn marks were due to the solder and iron uh, from previously. So I'm going to make my way around to the other side uh, and remove the solder, make sure I get a good electrical connection, a good electrical connection, excuse me. And then uh, let me measure again with my multimeter to make sure we still have continuity uh, between the tips and the remaining of the tinsel leads. So, uh, one second. All right. So before I start, um, I guess desoldering this side, just kind of wanted to show what it looks like here. Um, as you can see, uh, I think the attempt was to just to, to solder a wire to it at the very tip. And so, um, I am going to go ahead and remove that and, uh, try to see if I can see what's below it before I assume what I'm going to do next and go from there. So, um, uh, let me start desoldering. Um, go see what it looks like. All right, so clean this up a little bit. Again, just a lot of solder residue, solder iron residue, and uh, as expected, the solder just came off here with the wire that was supposed to, I guess, be the extension uh, since it did not have any uh, uh, terminals, and they must have snapped off because these don't look like screw on from the bottom. So in order to access these spring terminals, you've got to actually be able to put a an Allen wrench or torque screw on the inside and uh, install them. And usually that's done before the surround here is attached. So uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, see if I can attempt to uh, unscrew the push spring terminals, uh, loosen up uh, these uh, terminations and then pull them out to the edge where I can then solder some uh, thicker wire to them and secure them. All right guys, so did some more work here. Um, in order to really access um the tinsel leads where they terminated to the previous push spring terminals i had to remove the surround uh this is actually pretty easy because of how modular sundown made it here in this particular case they got the surround rings at these metal bars um, that hold the surround in place with very 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 light in fact, it was just almost kind of easy to pull out um, RTV holding it in place. So was able to kind of push that back a little bit. That way I can access the leads down here, um, or at least the terminations of the tinsel leads into the push spring terminals. And what that allowed me to do is also start cleaning up a lot of this cold solder joint that was attempted to be made last time. So got all that pulled off, uh, cleaned up a little bit. You can see it looks a lot better, but still... Uh, pretty disappointed with whoever did this uh, work last time. So that being the case, I went ahead and cleaned it up. My intent is to get these leads soldered onto some beefy wires uh, and secure them properly, insulate them properly, so that way it's not touching the uh, uh, the frame or anything like that and allows for a really low resistance contact uh, point once you connect it to your amplifier or your intermediate box connection to the amplifier. So looks pretty good. I went ahead and also labeled the uh, polarity of each voice coil before I removed everything. That way it's consistent for the end user to know what's what, uh, whether the colors of the wire distinguish it or not, at least it's uh, labeled on there. Um, cool. So again, I'll, uh, I'll wait to put this back on uh, until I make my solder joint. I'll go ahead and work on the other side uh, here shortly. As you can see, that's kind of still in place. So it's secured in there. You've got the tinsel lead, you know, joint where that was done. Um, just kind of, it looks like the screw maybe just broke off and that's why a previous user tried to solder some just basic wire on there and they failed. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing on this side. Uh, remove the um, surround ring holder, uh, these little brackets there, um, relatively straightforward. And then I'll probably reinforce it with a little bit more RTV uh, or um, 
um, uh, E6000 adhesive. And then again, I'll secure the lead. So uh, pretty straightforward, pretty easy, and uh, just takes a little bit of time and patience uh, in order to get it done right. So let's look at the next step. All right, guys, here we go. Made a lot of good progress on this subwoofer, and I think we've got it to a pretty much completed state of repair. As you're aware, it came in um, kind of a botched solder job. Uh, I think the original cause after just kind of looking at it and working everything through it was the fact that the push spring terminal leads or spring terminal leads um, that Sundown uses had actually broken off. And so uh, they use kind of a, I don't know, I guess you can call it modularized little um, uh, assembly here um, where it's multi screws. In fact, I may have some of the damaged parts. Let me pull those real quick. There we go. So here's the broken terminal lead, um, or, or this was actually salvaged. So they, they use, I guess, I haven't seen this before, but I'm sure it's readily available uh, through some other subwoofers. Uh, it's a plastic assembly that's got a multi-screw system here. Uh, this being the primary um, uh, mechanism to hold everything in place. So this runs right through the frame of the subwoofer apologize about the uh, blurriness here and from the bottom end you would screw the push spring terminal to it and at the very top end uh, you would have this screw here um, that would actually use the crimp terminals that's attached to the uh, tinsel leads soldered to the top so uh, once you screw this onto the top portion and then you screw this onto the bottom um, you just envision that the black part is where the frame is attached. So it looks like on two of the terminals, these snapped off and broke, hence then uh, the user couldn't use a push spring with terminal leads. And so what they ended up doing is trying to solder on to the tinsel leads up here themselves and did a terrible job. And it sounds like uh, my buddy here, Damien, uh, wasn't able to really make a good connection and uh, play the subwoofer. So hence his request to make the repair. Uh, that being said, I went ahead and removed all of this entire assembly. Again, uh, I'm not fond of these guys for many reasons. I know they're very easy. They're user-friendly. We like to see big old push spring terminals for 8 gauge, 4 gauge, and I'm sure they're coming out with some even bigger gauges now. And it's very convenient for removal, uh, but it is a high resistance point. All right, it's, 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 I believe most of this is steel. Um, and either nickel plated or just tinned, uh, but it's, it's magnetic. And in fact, I'll show it here real quick. Here's a magnet and you can see it sticks, right? So it's magnetic. So it's, it's got a lot of steel in it. So it's high resistance. It's not your amazing copper. It's not even, um, uh, aluminum clad copper or copper clad aluminum, which is aluminum with a layer of uh, copper on it. So that being said, again, very convenient. Um, will you notice the difference in performance at the end of the day? No, because the, the connection length from the actual load, which is your coil to this is very, very short. Hence, you're really not going to notice a big difference. Um, anyways, so we went ahead and removed this and what I did here was go ahead and I'm gonna have to grab the phone to show you guys. All right, so what I did here was, as I mentioned, I cleaned this up a bit. Let me turn on some light here so we can see what we're looking at. I cleaned this up a bit and I was able to remove all of the previous solder uh, that was on there. And I made a pretty good solid solder connection with high temperature solder to the tinsel leads and then attached it this four gauge flexible cable here. So that way uh, the end user um, uh, has a lot of flexibility in how they want to connect it, whether directly to the box or other connections. And that way you didn't have to put new um, uh, push spring terminals. I'm gonna zoom right in on here. You can see where the terminals attached previously, there's the two holes. Um, and then that metal piece there was kind of holding everything together. I did reinforce this wire. Uh, that way, when it gets yanked on and everything like that with a couple zip ties, this just helps kind of remove the tension and doesn't stress any of the tinsel leads um, that are uh, uh, stitched onto the spider itself.
I went ahead and labeled uh, the polarity on each of the voice coils. That way, again, um, the user is very well aware of what's plus, what's minus. I believe this is the dual 2 ohm. Um, I think after just taking additional measurements, it looks like a dual 2 ohm voice coil. Um, it's a three inch voice coil, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, overall, I think it turned out well. Uh, as you can see here, let me get my phone back on. All right, you can see it turned out pretty well. Um, nice uh, le leaded uh, connections now that you have the option. I didn't want to solder these. I wanted to kind of keep them uh, available for the user to figure out if they want to put some crimps on them or solder them to longer wires. And then we'll turn it to the other side and we did the same exact thing on the other side here. Uh, uh, labeled everything, cleaned it all up added some stress relief kind of at the very tip, went ahead and put heat shrink to ensure that it doesn't short out to the frame. Again, the frame is powder coated, so it's also non-conductive at the very edge, but if the coating ever came off, it is just a uh, steel or aluminum and it does become conductive. So overall, got some really good protection, got good um, uh, leads, same length all around. Um, wasn't able to put everything back together. Um, again, it's in great shape. Uh, so while I have this out here, I'll go ahead and do just a little bit of review. I think overall this is a subwoofer that is uh, rated for 2000 watts RMS. As I mentioned, uh, dual 2 ohm voice coils. So pretty beefy, um, pretty heavy. I did weigh it on my scale. Um, it is 61 pounds total. So that is a lot of weight uh, for a single subwoofer, which is, you know, a large motor like this, you would expect... Uh, uh, that that kind of uh, mass so uh, it's not for small enclosures <laughs> and when I say in small enclosures again this is coming from someone who has a uh, a truck so I wouldn't be able to put it in there and did it unless I did like a, uh, a a blow through from the rear uh, tailgate up into the cabin um, or completely remove the rear seat so uh, overall height and that's I'll measure from my uh, need a little thing here uh, talking about almost 10 and a half inches, so less than 10 and a half inches there, and that's again mounting depth, and so let's say 10 and a quarter, uh, so pretty tall in overall size and dimensions. High roll surround, definitely one of the bigger ones that I've seen. Um, dust caps only about what six and a half inches here, if I'm not mistaken, so it's a six inch dust cap. Um, so just normal, your basic standard um, sundown dust cap. Uh, these tend to be some of the, actually the most uh, abundantly available dust caps out there, whether you look at Alibaba or various marketplaces for speaker repair parts. So, um, and that's what sundown's uh, stuck with. So double stitched um, foam surround. You can see it's got the rubber gasket. Uh, you guys have heard me about this. I, I, I just like these. It helps with sealing the enclosure. It helps kind of the overall fitment. And you can see Sundown added a little bit of stamping in here to customize their subwoofers. So uh, the motor. So the motor, I'll try to flip over. But before I do that, I just wanted to kind of look at all the other accessories uh, and uh, um, uh, ventilation on the subwoofer here. So um, there is venting on the bottom pole and as, as well as the bottom magnet. But you can see here right around the voice coil, there is additional venting. I see these uh, quite a bit on the Sundowns. So... Uh, overall, again, it does provide a lot of uh, circulation around the voice coil. Um, they don't recommend this subwoofer for a sealed enclosure. I think for this 12 inch, they recommend two and a half cubic feet. And I understand it's a 0.2 cubic feet displacement of the subwoofer internal. So it does consume quite a bit more than your average subwoofer there. Um, again, pretty beefy tensile leads on both ends. So you've got double tensile leads for each polarity. So four on each uh, coil as we can kind of look in here a little bit sorry about the lighting uh, you can see that there's um, two for plus two for minus and then at the same uh, for the other one you've got two for plus two for minus there so um, beefy tinsel leads uh, spider looks like it's a six to seven inch spider I'm guessing it's a double spider I can't really see so I would imagine for something with this li large of an excursion which I think is rated for 30 uh, millimeters um, one way. So pretty big excursion. And you'll see that as I uh, 
finish off the video with a little bit of uh, uh, 20 hertz cycling through the subwoofer. So huge motor, huge motor uh, boot uh, with the Sundown logo on it. Um, so again, beefy uh, overall diameter. I'll measure that as I flip it over. So it can be one second. All right, so here's the back. Um, and just looking even from the top, you're almost seeing the outer diameter of the bottom plate is almost as big as kind of the, the internal of the frame itself. So pretty beefy. Um, now let's take some measurements real quick. Let me look at the top. And I'm guessing this is... So we're looking about eight and a half inch outer diameter for the bottom plate, not including the boot. As far as height, looking a little bit over three inches. So maybe three and a quarter there for the overall height. Now I'm looking at the boot. So I think the boot covers from the top plate to the bottom plate, uh, but pretty beefy. Uh, I like the frame, very sturdy, worth everything of its 60 pounds. And I believe these retail for about 649, um, uh, which I guess is decent for a sundown price uh, sub that can handle 2000 RMS. Uh, and I'm guessing they are conservative rated. I will say I, I did play around with this for a little bit. It is pretty noisy for the ventilation in the back, which is always a good thing. That means it's moving a lot of air, but very similar. I think last time I heard something that was this noisy was kind of the seismic audio. Uh, and they had kind of this silly plastic cap in the back that was covering the vent hole, I guess, preventing anything from falling in uh, to the motor structure there. But this was pretty loud. Uh, again, um, it does move a lot of air, so I guess that's there's pluses and minuses. But overall, uh, great sub. Uh, looks like it's well built. Um, I know that there's a lot of kits out there for rebuilds uh, for most of the Sundown subwoofers. Uh, price point, I mean, I personally do feel like they're a little bit uh, higher than most of the uh, folks out there. But again, you're paying for name. Uh, which is the sundown name, right? A lot of folks want to be able to say they have the sundown or show folks that they have sundown. So you tend to pay a little bit more, very similar to the JL Audios, right? You're, you're going to pay a little bit more for having that name brand. Uh, but overall, it doesn't take away from this is a pretty high performance subwoofer. Uh, hopefully, um, our friend Damien enjoys it uh, for, you know, for a lot, lot of time to come. So, um, all right, uh, let's play a little bit of music and then... Uh, uh, we'll go from there. Again, another repair by Mo the Engineer. Hopefully this helps someone out there, whether it's the repair itself or just the review of the subwoofer. Um, uh, yeah, if you like, subscribe, um, share. Really appreciate it. Thanks, guys.